If you are currently leveling up your Django and Postgres skills with this tutorial, you might like to know that this tutorial is part of a whole playlist where you will learn how to, with Django and Postgres, create database level constraints and triggers. If you like this playlist and you would like to learn more about Django ORM, then do check out our Django ORM Mastery course on Udemy. Links to the playlist and course can be found in the video description. Now, what you probably noticed in the previous tutorial when we created our new Postgres container was that it doesn't actually create a new database for our project. And we need to remember that within our Django project, when we migrate our Django models, Django doesn't actually build a database. We need to actually have a database already existing in our database for us to actually migrate our Django models to. Now, there are plenty of different approaches to build a new database in our Postgres container. We're going to automate this process using a Postgres SQL startup script. So let's just familiarize ourselves with some of the basics of setting up a Postgres database and the process that we have followed so far. So we created a Docker Compose file. In this Docker Compose file, we specified for us to download and utilize from Docker Hub the Postgres image, the official Postgres image. Now, in order for us to get that working correctly, within Docker Compose, we had to set up the environment variables, username and password. That allowed us to use the admin tool to actually log into our Postgres database. All right, so when we run our Docker Compose file, it will then take that image, use our environment variables to build a Docker container and run the Docker service. When we run our container, the Postgres service is going to initialize. Through that initialization process, it's going to perform a number of tasks. So the first thing, Postgres SQL by default is going to require a data dictionary. So this is where it's going to store all of its data files, everything related to your databases, for example. So this directory is specified when initializing the, the database. Now the default setting here is that you'll find this data in slash var slash lib slash Postgres SQL slash data. So if you're wondering where Postgres SQL stores all of your database data, that is where you're going to find it. Now, some other important things to know about the container initialization is that there's two key configuration files that are initialized and created when Postgres first initializes. So the first file is the Postgres SQL.config file. This is the main configuration file, which we'll be taking a much closer look at a bit later, but that's important to start to remember and to identify. And secondly, is the PG underscore hba.config. So this is the client authentication configuration. Again, we'll take a closer look at that a bit later on. But in a nutshell, this stands for Postgres SQL host based authentication configuration. So this is the configuration file that determines how clients are authenticated when attempting to connect to our Postgres SQL database server. So from this file, we can control which hosts or IP addresses are allowed to connect to the server. We can specify different authentication rules as well as configure it for different types of, in of encryption and authentication. Now important for us and for this tutorial is to know about this slash docker dash entry point dash init db dot D directory. So during the initial startup, when the data directory is empty, our data directory up here is empty. The entry point script of the Postgres SQL Docker image will automatically execute any scripts it finds in this folder. So that's important. And that's where we're going to place our startup script for our Postgres database. So our task is to place a file, a startup script inside of this folder. So when the container initializes, it executes that file. Now, this is just a simple startup script, but we could also add data into this folder and that would also get then initialized and inserted into the database. OK, so let's give this a go. Let's start by just moving everything down. Let me just zoom out a little bit. OK, right. So first of all, we need to identify where we're going to actually place 
our script. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call this Postgres. So this is anything related to Postgres database for my project startup wise. And inside of here, I'm going to create a new folder called scripts. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a new file called, let's call it db script, uh, db script dot sh. Again, if you're not familiar with .sh file, these are files that are used to automate tasks, execute commands, or sequence multiple commands together in a script format. So sh file is a shell script file. So here we're building a script as if we were actually logged on to the container and we were typing it into the actual command prompt. Now what's important here is that we identify the shell that's being utilized by our target container. Now our container, let's remember, is a we're using the Alpine lightweight version of Linux. So we need to be able to identify what shell is actually available inside of that particular version. And you will find that if you just use the Postgres latest version, that the shell will be slightly different from the one that we're going to be utilizing with Alpine. So you'll need to research that for different versions of Postgres if you're utilizing them and just be careful of that and um, make sure that you identify the correct shell because well, that's what we need to specify first. So the first line that we're going to need to specify is our shebang or hashbang. So here we're going to specify the path to the shell interpreter. So that is going to be uh, slash bin slash sh. So here we're telling the operating system that's on our container, so to speak, to utilize the bin shell to interpret and to execute the following commands. So now we need to identify which user is actually going to execute the commands. Now, remember, we have set up a user called Postgres. So what we're going to need to do here is say export PG user. We're just setting this up equals uh, is going to equal Postgres. So that's our user. So what we've done here is we've leveraged this PG user, which is an environment variable used by the Postgres database to determine the user account that will be used to execute the following commands. And we specified that as Postgres. That's the user that we've set up in our Docker Compose file. So if you have made any changes, if you have made any different users, just make sure that you have specified an admin user to run this script. Right. So now what we need to do is actually create a script to run the command in so so to speak the the shell that we specified so what we're going to need to do here is specify psql so psql this is the command line utility that's used to actually connect to our postgres sql database so psql and then we use the c flag as a command so we're specifying the fact that we want to run a command and now we can run our command so we want to create a database so we specify create database and then the name of the database so let's call this django uh, inventory uh, yeah let's just call it django inventory so that is the database that's going to be created for us so once that's done we will also if you remember in our django project we are using uuid version 4 so we are going to need to install that extension so while we're here, let's go ahead and do that. So PSQL, let's run a new command. Now we can specify now the database because it should exist because we've just created it. So DJ inventory, we use now the command. So the command is going to be create extension. So remember what we're doing here is we're just installing the extension that's needed for us to utilize UUID in our database, what we specified in our Django model. So extension if not exists. So basically we're just going to install it. If it doesn't exist, we need a backslash and then specify UUID uh, OSSP. That's the name of the extension that we're going to install. So we need to make sure we end it with the semicolon to specify the end of the command. And that should be it. Right, so here in the Mac, we need to make sure 
that this script has permissions to run as a standalone executable file. Now, by default, that won't be the case. So what we're going to need to do here in the Mac is make sure that is the case. I think on Windows, you won't need to do this. So here on the Mac, what I will need to do is I'll CD into it. So I'll CD into, uh, well, let's just make sure we know where we are. So let's CD into Postgres. I don't need to CD into it, but assuming that maybe you're fairly new to this type of thing. So Postgres SQL, let's go into the scripts folder. That's where our script is. So what I can do now is run the cmod, chmod uh, command. I'm going to specify the fact I want to add the execute capabilities to the current user that I'm using. And then I need to specify then the actual, sorry, db, db script, the actual file that I want to specify that new permission on. So I run that. What I can now do is run the ls command again with the l flag. And you can now see that this script has execute because the x is there indicating the fact that I can now execute this file. Right, so that just leaves me to test it out. Um, I have removed all the containers. I'm going to keep the images there in place. Uh, I don't need to download those again. So let's uh, go ahead and clear that. Let's uh, see if we can find the command quickly. So docker compose up. So I'm going to bring everything back up again and hopefully everything will work as intended. But actual fact, before we do that, whoa, 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 let's uh, actually indicate and let docker know that we want to use that script. Apologies. We are going to need to make a change here in our docker compose file. Apologies. I got a little bit too excited there. So we're going to need to tell our container or we're going to, sorry, need to move the file that we've created and made executable to our container. And we're going to need to put that in the right place. So let's set up a volume. So volumes, and let's go ahead now and uh, let's go ahead and set this up. So dot slash, I'm just trying to think where it is. So it needs to be relative to the compose file here. So it's going to be dot slash, so dot referring to this directory, slash referring to a, a new folder. And that folder is called Postgres. Inside of Postgres, we have scripts. And that is what I want to copy over. So anything inside of that folder, I want to copy that across. So that folder, colon. Now we're identifying where we want to store it on the actual container. So that's going to be slash and then docker entry point uh, dot init dot init db dot uh, d. OK, so we're simply creating the new service. As we do that, we're going to copy anything over from this directory over to the containers directory here. And as we've already specified, when the container is initialized, PostgreSQL will look for any files inside of that folder and execute them. Right, so let's now actually give this a go. So we're bringing it up again, all of our containers. So it looks like everything has started. Now, if we take a look at our container, we can get a much more detailed view of the actual installation process. So if I select inventory DB, go to my logs and work through, if I zoom in a little bit, we can start to see some interesting things here. So it looks like we've created our PostgreSQL data directory. You can see here that there was an error with the extension. It looks like, uh, it looks like we've tried to run the extension again. It looks like here that, where are we? Somewhere it says that we cannot install. Oh, here, so there was an error again here. UUID OSP is not available. So it is quite interesting and it's well worth just familiarizing yourself with this process, although you may not understand any of this text, but just the fact that potentially if there are any errors with the startup script, you're going to find that information or you're going to be able to help debug that by viewing the log information here. Right, so I'm going to delete the containers and start again. If you take a look at the scripts file, you'll find there is a mistake here. There should be a space after exists. 
So there should be a space between the exists and the backslash here. So let's give that a go now. So run docker compose up again. So let's inspect the the information that's provided in logs, you can still see that there's an error. Extension UID OSSP is not available. And we go ahead and then create the extension again. We try to run the extension again. So potentially it has worked successfully. Okay, so let's get back into our browser. Let's have a look. So I haven't closed this from the previous viewing, but this is going to be 127.0.0.1.80.80. That's going to open up AdMiner again. So we're going to need to specify if you remember that. So Postgres, password Postgres, the server. Remember that's going to be our service name, inventory DB. So let's add that in, let's log back in. Okay, right, so notice straight away that it looks like our script was working partially in that our database was created. Our DJ inventory, Django inventory table was created successfully. So let's resolve this. First of all, I don't quite like the name DJ inventory. I'm just going to change it now to inventory. You can change it to whatever you like, of course. And then second, I just need to make changes to the command again to make it correct. So we're going to need the dash there, not equals. So that's going to be the correct name of the extension. So now what we can do is run this one more time. If we go back into our adminer, just refresh, you can see that our database hasn't been created. So this is the second lesson to learn. So what's happened here is that we have already initialized our database, which means that the data directory has been set up. What's important to remember is that by default, a volume is going to be created where that data directory has been initialized. So if you try to do what we've just done there, we made some changes and we tried to reinitialize to recreate the containers, the existing data is going to be stored in the volume. It's not going to be overridden at all. So it's important to remember if you're going to make those type of changes and you want to restart everything, you will need to delete the containers and then also delete the volumes. So it deletes that data directory and is then recreated when we restart the containers. Now, before we forget, there is obviously one other change that we need to make, and that is to change the name of the database. We want to install the extension. So we should be good to go now. Let's go ahead and bring everything back up. Hopefully this time the container has been created successfully. There are no errors. So let's take a quick look here. So we don't seem to have the error regarding the extension. That looks good. So go ahead and refresh the AdMiner page. Uh, you're going to need to type in the username and password again. Let's log in. And you can see we have the inventory table. If I move into the inventory table, you can now see we have something called routines. Inside of here, you can see that the UID has been installed successfully. If that isn't enough for you, what you can do is use the SQL command option here. If you select extension name and the version from the table PG extension, that should show you all the extensions that have been installed. So that's the extension that we have just in installed, UUID OSSP. So I do apologize if that was hard to follow with the mistakes that I made. I was trying to build an experience there to try and embed some of those important aspects of looking at the logs, understanding the basic principles of volumes and how that interacts and is related to the Postgres initialization process. As we get deeper into the course, we will review and return back to the startup script. But for now, we have now everything ready for us to connect a Django project to our Postgres database.